Hello, this is Odette Hadas from Tracepan Communications, and today's video is an introduction to OMCI, the PON Service Setup and Management Protocol. When we talk about control messages in the ITU PON technologies, there are actually two types of messages. One is called the PLOM, Physical Layer OEM, which handles activities like activation and deactivation of ONUs, exchange of the keys for encryption, and so on. Uh, the second type of messages are the ONU Management and Control Interface, OMCI, which is the subject of this video. OMCI messages are transported over a dedicated GEM or XGEM port. This is the same transport mechanism which is used for payload. The transport mechanism is described in the relevant standard depending on the type of PON technology. So for GPON, it would be 984.3, XGPON1, G987.3, and so on. The syntax of OMCI is specified in the dedicated OMCI standard, G988. And as I just mentioned, the messages are transferred in the payload channel unlike the flow messages, which are transferred in the header. Okay, so actually OCI is transferred in the same manner as you would transmit the user data, which is the payload on the pod. So what is OMCI? OMCI is the ONU Management and Control Interface, which provides a standard way to discover ONU capabilities and to manage and control them for configuration, fault, performance, and security management. It is specified in G988, which superseded an older standard called G984.4. G984.4 was originally uh, standardized for GPON only. And later on, when OCI was expanded to other technologies, including XGPON, XGSPON, and NGPON2, uh, a new standard was defined, which is a common standard for all these PON technologies. The basic components of OCI are, first of all, the MIB, the Management Information Base. This is what describes the configuration of the ONU. Uh, and it consists of MEs, or managed entities. These MEs, managed entities, are tables that define a set of attributes, actions, and alarms. The attributes are uh, the values within the ME. In other words, if an ME is a table, in other words, an ME is a table, it has uh, various rows, and each row is an attribute with a value. Uh, there are specific names depending on the type of ME. And the list of allowed values is defined in the standard. The type of value also dep depends on the type of uh, attribute. So some of them are numerical, some of them are hexadecimal, some of them are text, some of them are ASCII, and so on. And there are also some that are tables. And in addition, there are relations between the managed entities, explicit or implicit. I will show an example later on. Uh, and these relations, or using these MEs and relations, uh, the OCI model allows you to describe different functions of the ONU. OCI messages. The standard defines two formats for the OCI messages, baseline and extended. The baseline messages have a fixed length of 48 bytes, while the extended ones have a variable length, which can go up to 980 bytes. The use of the extended OCI messages is limited and is only supported by a small number of vendors. And even these vendors uh, don't use it uh, in every case. It's typically used for processes requiring transfer of significant amounts of information, as an example, MIB upload, which we'll talk about, or software update, software download to the ONU. So let's talk about a few processes, a few examples of processes, and then we'll focus on one of them and go into a little bit of more details. Uh, MIB reset is when the OLT reset, resets the ONU to its factory default. MIB upload is when the OLT learns about the current MIB of the ONU. And this is something it does before making any configuration changes. Creation of managed entities, setting of attributes within the managed entities. These are both functions which are done when configuring the ONU for various services or functions. 
timing synchronization, which is very common when uh, PON is used for backhaul of uh, base stations. Software image update, including the download and activation and commit. Uh, and as I said, MIP upload and software image download are both processes which involve significant amounts of information. And that's why whenever uh, the extended messages are supported, it makes sense to use them in these processes. So let's take MIP upload as an example and get into a little bit more details. So what is MIP upload? When an ONU initializes, it populates its MIP with information about its equipment configuration. It makes this MIP visible to the OLT. The MIB upload is a process that allows the OLT to discover the hardware and service configuration of the ONU. And it is initiated by the OLT whenever it brings up a new ONU or after a configuration change in the ONU, like as an example, after downloading a new software version. Um, when I say new ONU, I don't mean that this ONU has just come out of the factory. It means that it's new from the OLT's point of view. In other words, the OLT has not seen this ONU before, so it needs to learn about its configuration and capabilities. And then if there's a configuration change, the OLT will usually uh, request a new web upload to understand the full configuration of the ONU. Now, this is usually done before the OLT makes any settings of the ONU. First, it wants to understand what the current MIB is, and then it, make it, it can make some changes. So how does MIP upload work? It starts with a message coming from the OLT to the ONU saying <clears throat> MIP upload. It actually means Mr. ONU, I would like to get the full information about your MIP. And the ONU responds with a message called MIP upload response. And the contents of this message is a number. This number is how many messages will be needed for uploading the full MIP. So based on the MIP size, the ONU makes this calculation and respond with this number. The typical number of messages that are needed, uh, if it's baseline messages, it's typically several hundreds. If it's extended messages, it's tens, or in some cases, even less than 10. So thanks to the fact that extended messages have a much larger content field, uh, they can transfer much more information, and thus a much smaller number of messages are needed. Uh, the next step is a message called MIP upload next, which actually means, okay, please send me the next part of your MIP. And the ONU responds with information about the MIP. Uh, typically, it's an ME and the values of some of its attributes. If it is, if the extended messages are used, um, usually the message will have information about multiple managed entities in the same message. Now, this process is repeated X times, where X is the number of messages that are reported by the ONU in the initial MIB upload response message. And so if it says, I need 450 messages, this will repeat 450 times. And at the end of this process, the OT has the full picture about the MIB of the ONU, and then it can start configuring it for whatever it decides to do. Here's an example of a screenshot from our uh, from TracePan's PON analyzers, the GPON and GPON expert. And here you can see the MIB upload message sent downstream by the OLT, the response. Uh, in this example, it's baseline messages. You can see the number of messages that are needed, 423 in this example. And then we'll see the MIB upload next and the MIB upload next response repeated as many times as needed. In this example, 423. Okay, what happens after MIB upload? The OLT will typically set the ONU to different services. So let's look at three examples of services. One is layer two unicast, the second is layer two multicast, and the third example is voice services. Uh, we're talking about voice over IP, which, which are voice services which are delivered directly from the ONU, not from an external gateway. Uh, there are separate processes for setting up SIP or H248. Uh, some of the process is common, but there are some differences. Uh, we will not get into the details of all of them, but let's look at one of them, at one example, which is the layer two multicast. 
So the layer two multicast model uh, is described in uh, G9A clause Roman 2, 1, 3. There's a service model, which is described by OMCI in an OMCI relations diagram, something I mentioned earlier. Each of these rectangles with the rounded corners or squares with the rounded corners represents a managed entity. And then there are the arrows and the dashed lines, the explicit and implicit relations. And in order for layer two multicast data services to be set up, the ONU needs to have these managed entities with these relations. So when the OLT sets them up, it creates the relevant managed entities, creates the relations, sets up the attributes in these managed entities. This is actually what it means. Now, let me show you an example of two diagrams, again, taken from our pod analyzer, the expert. And here you can see an example of a multicast data service where everything is configured correctly. You can see a list of managed entities with their relations. And if you compare this with the bottom one, you can see an example of a configuration where some of the managed entities or some of the attributes, some of the relations are missing. Uh, quite easily, you can notice the difference. There are much, many more managed entities, or many more rectangles on top compared to the bottom. And what would usually happen in this case is that if you look at the upper diagram, it means multicast service would work. If you look at the bottom one, it will not work because some of the configurations are missing. Another subject which, which is closely related to OCI, and I will explain why, is interoperability. And I'm talking about interoperability between OLTs and ONUs. The OLT will come from one vendor, ONUs from a second vendor. You connect them to each other and something doesn't work. You don't get the service that you're expecting. And typically, if you go to the vendors, they will point figures at each other and each one will say it's the other one because each one may be behaving perfectly okay, but not the way the other end is expecting. Now, very often, what is not behaving the right way is the OMCI. So let's understand why. So as I said, OMCI is one of the major causes for interoperability problems. And this is due to the differences in OMCI implementations of different vendors and different models. Some of the complexities are the following. First of all, there are about 400 different types of classes of managed entities. Only a subset is mandatory. Every managed entity has various attributes with allowed values. We mentioned this earlier. And every vendor would have a slightly different implementation. They have different attributes which are set to different values. And not every OLT will accept the settings of an ONU and vice versa of these attributes. Uh, in addition to these 400, and this is growing every time, every time there's a new amendment, uh, there are more than 300 additional classes which are reserved for vendor-specific use. Now, the idea with vendor-specific use is that the OLT and the ONU can have uh, some proprietary features, which would be a competitive advantage. Uh, but the intention is that these would be used only if the OLT and the ONU come from the same vendor. So if the OLT sees that the other end is a different vendor, it must not use these managed entities unless there was some pre-agreement uh, where they learned each other vendor specific. Uh, however, in real life, uh, there are cases where an OLT tries to use vendor specific MEs with a different ONU. And this is, again, a cause for potential interoperability problems. And last but not least, there are around 20 different versions and amendments of OMCI. OCI started in 2004, uh, and then there are new versions and new amendments which are published from time to time. Uh, it started, as I said, with the earliest G984.4, which was GPON only, um, going all the way to the latest uh, amendment of 2020, uh, which supports XGPON, XGSPON, and GPON2, as well as GPON. Now, not everything is backward compatible, so you may have uh, one end, you know, when you say, which is a more advanced version than the OLT. So some of its attributes or MEs may not be 
supported by the other end. Uh, that's it for this video. This was just an introduction to give you a little bit of a feeling about OMCI. If you want to learn more, you can go to our website. Uh, we have a number of webinars on our website, including one about OMCI. Uh, you can learn more about our company, products and solutions in tracepan.com, www.tracepan.com. And you can contact us for any additional questions at info at tracepan.com. Uh, if you'd like the recording of the OMCI webinar, which is a more detailed webinar about the same subject, you can also contact us on the same email. Uh, if you like this video, give us a like. And if you'd like to learn more and get more videos from time to time, you may subscribe to our channel. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, I'm Odette Hadas, and I enjoyed being with you today. Thank you.